In the heart of Alaska's Prince William Sound, between the communities of Valdez and Cordova, lies the Aleutic village of Tetitlik. Accessible only by sea and air, Tetitlik lies on a one-mile-wide strip of land bordered by the Chugach National Forest to the east and the waters of Prince William Sound to the west. Early ancestors of Tetitlik came from throughout Prince William Sound. One of Alaska's first public schools opened in Tetitlik in 1902. Federal policy at the time, and through the 1950s, placed no value in education for Native students beyond the eighth grade. Rural teens were sent to boarding schools in Seward, Sitka, or Eklutna in Alaska, or to reservations in Oregon, Oklahoma, and Kansas to complete their high school or trade education. In all of these schools, the use of native languages was prohibited, further adding to the decline of the Aleutic language. I don't think the federal judges were ready to integrate American schools in the early 20th century. So they kept up coming up with excuses why these people weren't really civilized yet, and therefore they weren't citizens, and therefore they weren't entitled to go to public school or to vote in elections. But the policy from, for all these people was to suppress the native cultures and languages in order to assimilate them into the American melting pot. So the Aleuts, who already were literate in two languages, speaking two and writing two languages in two different alphabets, uh, were nevertheless treated the same as people who were completely illiterate. On July 7, 1958, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed the Alaska Statehood Act and the territory of Alaska became the 49th state of the Union. Alaska Natives looked forward to receiving full rights as citizens of the United States. And generally speaking, I think we were lulled into thinking that our land was safe under the terms of the Statehood Act um, because there was, um, you know, a, uh, a provision, that dis the disclaimer clause, that where the state disclaimed a right, any right or title to native lands. But the problem was they never defined what native lands were. The Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was an act of Congress to settle the uh, land claims with the uh, Aboriginal Native people. Uh, they end up giving up 80% of uh, the land for promises of economic development, uh, and that includes participa participation in the uh, SBA 8A program. We put a map on the wall, and we had a full board meeting. And I drew a line on the map, and I drew the, those corporation boundaries based on watershed. Everything north of the slope, drain north, was north slope. When he drained between the Brooks Range and the Kaikuk River, that was the Nana region. South into the Yukon became Doyon, but it was common lifestyle, common dress, common food, common language. And that's where we drew the lines. And they've, they're standing today from those old uh, crayons on a, on, a, on a map. In 1989, the oil tanker Exxon Valdez ran aground just a few miles from Tetitlik, spilling millions of gallons of crude oil into the pristine waters of Prince William Sound. Although currents carried some of the surface oil away from the village, most of the contamination sank. This year, 1989, we had the largest biomass of herring on record in Print William Sound, and the herring are on the bottom of the food chain. Whatever the oil did, it killed whatever the herring eat or, what, or the herring itself. So this took away the seals and other things that we, the ducks that came to eat the herring spawn and whatever we practiced hunting, you know and it made it very difficult for, well, 20 years or better. Today, 
Tetitlik Corporation subsidiaries are successful in the fields of project management, construction, information technology, military role player training, and other vital services. The Tetitlik Corporation has parlayed that success into the creation of the Copper Mountain Foundation. The foundation promotes the preservation of the Aleutic culture and language and is dedicated to providing education to shareholders. The best way to preserve the Aleutic language and the culture for future generations is to provide more opportunities for the youth and elders to get together. The um, Nuchik Spirit Camp is, is um, a, a great example as well as the Tetitlik Cultural Heritage Week. And so making sure that those things continue on into the future and that, that more opportunities like that are created. The kids have to learn to be, stand up and say I valued from Prince William Sound. And I'm proud of it. We can definitely find a balance between our traditional Aleutic culture and the demands of the new world. My hope and my vision for our people is has always been to be a uh, educated, proud, united people. I'm optimistic about our future. I believe that there are a lot of opportunities for our shareholders and more importantly our descendants. I think the 8A program is doing exactly what uh, it's what it's intended to do and that's to improve the lives of the people who own the company. We could now offer uh, steady dividends, uh, employment opportunities and scholarships and also participate in uh, culture preservation.